Did you know that the LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventors Intelligent Hub comes with a built-in three-axis gyroscope? If you're building a robot for competition or just a LEGO robotics hobbyist, you are going to want to know everything about how to use this sensor. And that is what today's video is all about. What is up everyone? It's Kyle here again and you are watching BuilderDude35, a YouTube channel that aims to teach you everything that you've ever wanted to know about LEGO Mindstorms. Right now make sure that your robot is powered on and connected to your smart device like your iPad, your phone, or your laptop because we're going to be exploring the sensor. And if you need help setting any of that up, check out this video right here which is my getting started guide for the robot inventor. With a fresh project opened up, Click in the top right corner to open up port view and close to the top of the screen you'll see the status of the gyro sensor and it shows you the three principal angles on the sensor. As I mentioned at the video's introduction, this robot features a three axis gyroscope. The first axis is called the yaw axis which is rotation about the vertical axis here and that's going to be most useful for when your robot turns. The second axis is called the pitch axis which happens when your robot tilts forward or backward. Think of if you were driving driving up or down a hill with your robot. And the third axis is the roll axis, which is another axis that is parallel with the plane of the ground. And for this, you can think of the robot tipping over if a bear was to come over and push on it. The range of these angle values starts at zero degrees and increases up to positive 180 degrees in one direction or negative 180 degrees in another direction. And zero degrees always indicates the starting orientation of the robot until you reset it in the code, which is something that we will see in just a few minutes. There is a small dead zone in the gyro sensor's range on the pitch axis between 85 degrees and 90 degrees. So right now you can see I'm holding the robot just about at 85 degrees. And if I tilt it just a little bit more, it goes from 85 degrees right up to 90 degrees. There's no in between. All of those intermediate values, 86, 87, 88, 89, are missing. It's like a blind spot in the gyro sensor. This little gremlin only appears on the pitch axis, so the roll axis and the yaw axis are just fine. And I'd like to thank my friend Gary from the YouTube channel Creator Academy Australia for pointing out this flaw in the gyro sensor to me. Gary also runs a Lego Robotics YouTube channel, and you can check it out with the link here. I have the Mindstorms app open, and now I'm ready to demonstrate a program that shows off the capability of the gyro sensor and I think there's no better example than showing you how to make your robot do 90 degree turns using the gyro because that's one of the most common applications. Now to kick off this program I'm just gonna go ahead and just do some of the boring code right off the bat. So we have to tell the robot which of our motors are movement motors. In my case those are motors A and C. The next step is we have to define a movement speed and I'm gonna set this to 25%. If you rotate too quickly, the gyro actually won't be able to detect changes in rotation quickly enough and you won't get an accurate angle measurement and the result of course is you won't get an accurate turn. So make sure you're taking your gyro turns relatively slowly and I recommend about 25% power for this. So the next part of course is the fun part. We get to use the gyro to make a turn but there's one important step that you can't forget about and that is you need to go into the sensor tab and you need to drag out this block which is set yaw angle to zero. The reason why this is important is because the gyro measures a heading relative to wherever the sensor was positioned when it first turned on. So whatever direction that the robot started in will always be the zero degree direction unless you reset it. That means you have to reset the yaw angle before the robot starts making its turn so your robot actually rotates the amount that you want it to. So what we'll do is we'll drag out this block which is start moving for some kind of steering value. And I'm gonna make a right turn and I'm gonna set this to 95%. The reason why I choose 95% is because this is closer to a turn that will pivot around the robot's inside wheel when it's going to make the turn. If you haven't already, I recommend seeing my video on the three types of turns for an FLL robot. I'll put the link up here if you're interested. That video is like a million years old at this point, but it has a lot of useful information. The next step is where the gyro sensor is going to come in again. So we already set the angle to zero degrees, so wherever we're starting is zero degrees and we're going to go into control and we're going to say wait until some condition is met. Then we can go back into the sensor tab and drag out the block that reads the angle from the gyro sensor. So it's this oval shaped one and we're looking for the yaw angle because remember the yaw angle is the actual angle that controls steering. It's on the vertical axis. And we're going to need one more piece of this puzzle here and we're going to go into the green operators tab and we're going to click this one 
which is the greater than sign. We want to drag out the block reading the gyro sensor's value in the left field, so we're waiting until the gyro sensor's yaw angle is greater than some value. And that value, of course, is going to be, you guessed it, 89 degrees. Of course, if we're making a 90 degree turn, we want to wait until the value is greater than 89, because 90 is the first value greater than 89. Unfortunately, there's no greater than or equal to expression in here, so greater than 89 is the closest we can get. Just a quick note, you should never use exactly equal to 90 degrees, because depending on your robot sampling rate, if you're turning really fast, your robot actually might miss when the sensor says 90 degrees, and by that time it's too late, and then it will never know to stop. Once the robot is finished making its turn, we can go into the movement tab and just tell the robot to stop moving. So let's take a look at what this looks like in action. Watching the robot make individual turns in action makes the turns look like they're pretty accurate. When the robot makes one turn, it looks like it's a pretty reasonable 90 degree turn. However, this doesn't give us an opportunity to expose little inaccuracies that may pile up over time. And the way I'm going to test this is by programming the robot to drive in a square. So the robot's going to drive forward, make a 90 degree right turn, and then keep repeating that and it will drive in a square. And any inaccuracies in the robot's turn will accumulate over time and we'll be able to see that. So the way we're gonna change this is we're going to go into control, we're going to drag out an infinite loop and we're going to put it right here and just wrap that code that we wrote right there. And uh, just, for, just for kicks, I'm going to actually get the set movement speed in there as well. That's because I'm going to use a different moving speed for driving straight and making the turn. And the other thing that we just want to add is we want the robot to uh, spend a little bit of time driving in a straight line. So go into movement, say start moving uh, straight at zero, and we'll set a different movement speed for when we're driving in a straight line. So say set movement speed 50%, drive straight, and then once it's done with that, we want it to stop moving. Sorry, actually let me jump in and make a slight correction here. So we want to get the specific drive straight block that makes the robot drive for a specific amount of distance. Otherwise your robot will not drive straight at all. So you could just take this one and chuck it. So we said set movement speed to 50% and drive straight for some amount of centimeters. And now when we run this and we look at the square, when the robot is first starting out, it looks like it's tracking the square pretty reasonably. But you can see the robot's square-shaped trajectory start shifting over time. And that's because in this case, the robot is over-rotating ever so slightly. And this means after a minute or so, the phase of the square path has shifted about 45 degrees and we're looking at a diamond shape. And if you wait another minute, the phase will have shifted exactly 90 degrees and it looks like it's back to a square again. So what that means is we should just go back and adjust the target value that we had before. So we said 89 degrees. And what I'll do instead is I'll change this to greater than 86 degrees. So this gives us a little bit more wiggle room. And now when we try running this on the square program, we notice that the robot is no longer overshooting. And over a long period of time, you can actually notice the robot is under rotating slightly, but it's certainly less than the amount that it was over rotating before. Feel free to play around with this target value and try to experiment using this repeated square test to see if you can get a target value that gets your robot to make the most reliable 90 degree turn without overcorrecting or undercorrecting. So far, we've only scratched the surface of what this gyro sensor is capable of. And pretty soon, I'm going to be building a self-balancing robot using this gyro sensor. So if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for that. And I wanna know in the comments below, what do you have planned with the gyro sensor? What kind of cool projects are you gonna make? Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week. Later.